Here we have a strangler fig. Strangler figs, the guardians of the forest. This one's Ficus Watkinsiana, or Watkins fig, or nipple fig. Um, it's in the family Moraceae, which is your figs and your mulberries, surprisingly. Um, and it's a, 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 certainly a canopy tree that gets well up above the other trees. And this is a strangler fig, which means, that, I guess, in some ways they cheat in starting at the top of the canopy and working their way, way down. They're, they're starting off as an epiphyte, a tree that, a seed that starts way up in the top of a, a, another tree that's already established. And surviving all those dry spells and surviving up there in the sun without any contact with the ground and, and slowly sending roots down the side of the trunk. It's a seedling that started up there in the canopy, sending its roots down They've slowly surrounded the tree that it started on. This one you can hardly see around the base here of the tree that's left in there. I just checked around the other side. There are a few branches still sticking out the top, but it's probably just a matter of time before that tree pretty much gets, a, as they say, strangled and disappears uh, and slowly rots. This might take another 100 years, 200 years before all that process happens. And you're just gonna end up with this big tubular-like tree um, that's hollow in the middle and this, trees that, this trunk that's formed from roots that have coalesced together as they've come down the trunk. When they hit the ground, they just take off like crazy and form this very thick fluted trunk that we see behind us. So as I said, this is Ficus Watkinsiana in the rainforest here in Mary Cancross. This is the one with the very large leaves. Um, we also have Ficus obliqua, the small leaf fig. So it's quite easy for you as guides in here that you're generally dealing with those two trees got the small leaf fig ficus obliqua, this large leaf one with the ficus watkinsiana. The small leaf fig also has a very small yellow to orange fruit when it's dropping, it's only about 10 mil, whereas the fruit of the ficus watkinsiana is about 40 to 50 mil. It can get quite a large fruit, probably not the largest fruit on the range here. I've seen some much larger fruit down at Budrum, but it's still a good size, purpley black, quite tasty looking fruit. Like the edible fig, or well not so much like the edible fig, these have very specific, very interesting um, pollination mechanism. There's a, a wasp or several wasps that are associated with each type of fig and that do all the pollination. There's a little female that does all the hard work and she flies from fruit to fruit. Or fr she starts off in one fruit, she flies to another fruit. There's a little hole in the end of the fig. You might've noticed in the figs that you get from the supermarket, little hole in, the, in the, the, the end opposite the stem. The little female crawls in through that hole. Her wings get pulled off as she's climbing in. She gets in there, she lays eggs, probably about 90% female or more, and uh, five to 10% male. Um, then the males hatch before the females. They actually fertilize the females before they get in, even get out of their eggs. And then the females gather pollen from that fig and travel to the next fig and the whole process starts again. A question I'd like answered personally is what those wasps are doing for the other nine months of the year when the figs aren't in fruit. But an amazing little story of uh, co-evolution over tens of millions of years um, with these figs and these fig wasps. Uh, a fantastic little story that you can be conveying to your visitors. So with the hollow trunk that forms after that poor unfortunate tree that this guy's had a shortcut on dies. Um, you've got this beautiful hollow which is fantastic habitat for microbats and owls. So think about all those sort of things that could be living in there, all the little invert invertebrates that are in there as well. And the other thing I'd like you to think about is the abundance of fruit that these guys produce. You'll have noticed that when they're in fruit, the, the floor of the footpath is, is saturated and sticky and smelly with fruit. Um, that's not just inconvenient for us, it's also abundance for all the wildlife that lives in the reserve. So the birds, the paddy melons, all the possums, everything's making use of that fruit when it's on. If you see a fig out in an open paddock, you'll also see a, an abundant amount of seedlings popping un up underneath it from all the animals that are coming in to feed it and bringing fruit in from elsewhere and those seedlings coming up as well. Okay, luckily we've got a time machine here today. I've just gone back several hundred years in time. This is the fig that we were just looking at before. This is how they start out. It's, this one's a fantastic specimen. It's winding down this poor, it's a Laraceae, a laurel of some sort, I'd say, but it's just winding down around that tree, 
different ways. Quite often they say vines go one way or the other. The roots are going both ways around this tree. So we've got these roots here just making their way down towards the base of the tree. There's a few big ones on this side. There's these fine ones coming down on this side. They're just, they've contacted the ground and this is when growth really starts to speed up and they surround the tree quite quickly and strangle it. <laughs>